God's answer to the brokenness of the world is to have a vibrant Christian fellowship within close reach, geographically and culturally, of every person. The Halbert Institute for Missions at Abilene Christian University prepares men and women to be used by God to establish church planting movements all over the world. As this new millennium dawned, a team went from ACU to plant churches in the Bronx, New York. Listen to their story. I pray for each and every house church that's meeting today. I pray for each and every one of your churches around the world, dear God, that you would just bless each and every heart there. And Father, that they will reach out to other people and bless them as well. Dear God, I pray so much that we just, just worship you today, Father. Just glorify you, Father, in everything we do, Father. Love you, Father. Praise your name, beloved Son, Jesus Christ. One of the things that, that I like about the work we're doing here is, is we're asking the, asking the question, what is church? And you know, for church, do you have to have a big building? Do you have to have pews? Do you have to have microphones and all this stuff? What does it mean to be church? And you, know, you look at the Bible where two or three are gathered, you know, there are my, says Jesus. And so we often use terms like house church or simple church or, or different words to distinguish our churches from what people might expect when they show up. Um, how, when when uh, two or three families meet in an apartment in a living room and they sing and they pray and they, they study scripture and they share communion, um, you know, that's church. And so our, our work has been less uh, trying to, to gather this huge group of people together to be what might look more traditionally, traditionally like church, but to um, gather people together in their homes and uh, to get, allow them to gather in smaller groups. Uh, our team came together through a series of steps. Um, I began in 1996 um, asking people to become a prayer partner for New York City and for a ministry team coming together. I began praying for a married couple. I was single at the time, living in Houston, working as a youth minister at, uh, at Impact Ministries in downtown Houston. And I began praying um, for a married couple to, uh, to join the effort. And uh, two weeks later, I met Todd and Becky Foster. I feel like our team really came together through prayer. Um, Jared really began by himself having a vision to come to New York and um, he began praying for, for a couple to join him so that he could become a team and, and he could make it a vision and shortly after that is when he met Todd and I. Uh, eventually I moved back up to ACU uh, where we could get uh, further mentoring and team development and uh, we quickly met Melissa Inslee. Um, looking back I'm pretty sure that God was calling me to greater discipleship and to surrender my life more fully to Him. Uh, eventually we came on to New York City and then um, met my wife and she, uh, she joined us here in the city. Well, the Bronx Fellowship is important to me because um, this church actually, it really focuses like on relationships with each other. As far as um, I went to other churches and I would just be sitting in the back of the church and no one would really come up to me asking me my name or anything like that. Bronx Fellowship is uh, an important part of my life at this point. Um, I've been learning a lot about the Bible and you know, going, getting in depth with the Bible as, to, as opposed to before when I used to just like look at it and just glance over it and skim through the Bible and now with the Bronx Fellowship they've made me understand to a certain degree, well to a lot of degree, uh, a lot more in depth. Uh, the Bronx Fellowship is important to me because right now uh, I'm going through a lot of hard times with my family, so this is like the only family that I actually have that's actually there for me. Mission is uh, everywhere people are, and uh, New York is a, a global city. It's, um, it was chosen partly as, as a strategic city uh, where all the peoples of the world are gathered. It's also a, a high-impact city for the rest of North America, the entire continent. Uh, as well as other parts of the world. Um, New York City has a, about 22 million people in the metropolitan area, 8 million in the five boroughs, which is the official kind of city limits. And then in the Bronx, there's about 1.4 million people. And there's actually, about, I think, about 1,500 people that live on my block. So there's no um, shortage of people to interact with. The question is, um, who and whether they want to interact with you. <laughs> doing ministry in New York is like doing ministry in the future. 
If you want to know what the face of the world's going to look like, it's going to look a lot like the New York metro area. In 2005, over half the world's population are going to live in cities. And they're going to live in cities like this one. New York metro area is 10,000 square miles. It covers more than three states. It uh, includes 29 million people, 18 million of which are New York City proper. That includes 150 major ethnic groups, over 50 different distinct languages, hundreds of dialects. When you talk about a, a cultural matrix, uh, ministry here is, is uh, just an amazing amount of variety, amazing amount of, of uh, multicultural experiences. The most exciting thing for me has been that our church really reflects our community and um, we have just been really blessed to have a very multicultural church emerge um, in our community and um, my last count we had over 15 different countries represented just in our in our church of about 70 people. Um, there's definitely so much diversity here that um, Christians are one voice among many and so it's a, it's a great place to learn how to live out your faith because you get challenged by a lot of other voices who are, who are asking you, um, you know, so what's, what's so great about Jesus? And um, do you really believe that? And how can you really believe that? There's such a mixing of cultures and so many different cultures that you can't learn them all. And so it's hard to know how to adapt to all these different people who think in all these different ways in a way that will allow me to communicate effectively. New York is a very diverse place. Um, it's said that there are large diasporas of peoples, large immigrant groups in, uh, in most major cities in the United States, but nowhere is like New York where they all come together. Um, LA, Los Angeles, you might have a large uh, Hispanic population. Um, in, uh, in San Francisco, you may have a large Asian population. And, and in, in Miami, you may have a large Caribbean population, but New York City, those all come together. Um, there are numerous Africans, Asians, Latinos, Europeans, Russian population in the hundreds of thousands. Um, so it's, it's truly a gathering place for all peoples of the world. Originally, I came to the Bronx um, the summer after my freshman year, and so I just decided to come and see what, see what was going on up here. And I'd also heard a lot about church planting during um, a time at ACU that fresh, my freshman year and got really interested in that and when I found out that Bronx Fellowship was a new church plant I got really excited about that so I could see how a church plant works so when it's in its early stages what do, you, what do the missionaries do and what all it entails and the work that it includes um, and I decided to come back because I just loved the city it was really there's a lot of diversity there's um, so many so many different kinds of people different walks of life and, and the work up here is amazing. There's so many good things going on. There was a lot of culture shock when I first got here because I mean, I grew up in Amarillo, Texas and I get here and there's millions of people everywhere. There's honking taxis, there's people running out in the middle in front of cars, there's trash all over the streets. I mean, there's not one thing about this place that is similar <laughs> to my home in Texas. How y'all doing? This is the LR. Linguistics, realistics, Latin rapper, live and for the road, the BX, the foundation, the Bronx. It's difficult to think of how to sort of encapsulate or summarize the, the brokenness that, that one sees here in the Bronx and in the city in general. Check it, linguistics, realistics, living revelation, Latin rapper. Ain't no stopping me, I'm doing this, I'm trapped in this world. All I see is drugs, wanna be thugs, prostitution, institutions on the news, all I see is murder. People go to work, just enough to pay them bills, life's so ill. Uh, the people here are, a lot of them are really crushed by the city, really kind of uh, held underneath the, the city's thumb. What? I mean, a lot of times people respond to their own brokenness with, you know, anger and with, with rage and, and uh, with being cruel and mean to others, and, and you certainly see plenty of that. But a lot of people also respond to their own brokenness with a recognition that, you know, we're in this together. It's, it's a lot of hard work and, um, you know, you get to know people. You have to get to know people first. You can't just sort of move in on, um, 
the, so to speak, their territory. Um, but um, I think building friendships with people makes it a lot easier to, to, for them to, to accept who you are and what you're doing. Uh, someone described New Yorkers as, as um, like a candy with a very hard shell but very gooey on the inside. You know, where once you break through the shell, oftentimes people will, you know, take you in as family and, and, and be, really be very personal and very open with, with you. In talking with uh, one of our, our house churches recently, we were talking about Christian leadership. And I was saying, you know, I think that's really kind of a, uh, a redundant phrase, Christian leadership. I think that every Christian is called to be a leadership, to be um, leading in the sense that, that a Christian is called to be different from the world and to, to be guided by God rather than by the people around him, the, the world, the culture around him or her. And so, um, and so in, the, in this sense, every Christian is called to be a leader in the world, to be, to be changing the world, to be exercising the, the gifts and the talents that God has given that person in order to have a positive impact on the world. I would tell students to be, um, to remember that everyone is called to submit to Christ, to answer the call of obedience and holiness of living, to answer the call just to follow, to follow Christ with your whole life. And then as you go along that journey, he'll make it clear the different tasks that he has for you to do. Whether you are a missions major or social work major or a business major, I would say do an internship. I mean, even if you have a tiny, tiny bit of interest and you're just curious, do it. Because I think it, it opens up doors for God to show you things. Um, you know, you may be a business major and realize, man, God's calling me into missions. Um, so I think that, that you should do an internship. Do find a place that you could get plugged in, that you could serve other people that you could observe how missionaries are living and how they're working. There's nothing I can think of um, that is more significant than being part of the mission of God and being swept up in what He's doing in the world, especially as this world becomes urban, global, postmodern. We need pioneers. We need people ready to go. fellowship.